So today we're going to try to find a generational player in the draft. A Mike Trout, a Juan Soto, someone that's a cut above the rest. Someone that is just special. And they don't have these in MLB, but I'm going to try to find one. I'm going to try to draft that next superstar. And yes, there are these types of players in Madden's franchise. I believe Bangle has done a video like this. And I know King of the Fourth Quarter has tried to do something similar with 2K. And I thought, you know what? Let's do this for MLB. So with that being said, let's draft a generational player. All right, so contracts are going to be off because I don't want to get fired because I want to stick with the team as long as possible. And that's, that's really about it. The only thing I want to make sure I'm doing is scouting. Scouting and signing my draft picks. That is literally it. Everything else can be on auto-manage. I just want to find that actually honestly i might leave scouting to the cpu and the only thing that i do is the drafting and making sure i have the right scouts and everything like that because honestly scouting in this game is kind of luck like kind of luck of the draw and you just kind of got to get lucky that you get some good players in the pool so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to make sure i get the best scouts that money can buy we're going to add him as well we're going to throw him in and then i need what east so we'll throw him in as well. And we should be good. One from each region. Uh, scouting is on auto. So yeah, I'll see you guys at the draft. All right, first pick, we gotta make this sure, like we gotta make sure this like is a good pick. We gotta make it count. I'm gonna avoid pitchers. If you wanna see like a generational pitcher episode or video like this, I'll do that. Because like I can go and draft this guy and I know he's gonna be like a killer closer in the next 27 years. You know what I mean? but I want to find a hitter that is just absolutely insane. First base, there's usually some pretty good ones and I could take a blue chip and I know he's going to be good for the future, but are any of these guys, he might actually be good. He might, he might be, he might be the one unless one of these guys just has killer stats. Honestly, that third baseman doesn't look bad at all. He, that, that might be the one because I'm looking at the rest of the ones that we have here like he looks good he looks good but he's probably gonna have like B potential so he's gonna be cap so I feel like taking the A potential what was he a third baseman is probably the best bet I uh, this guy looks like his hitting stats are already pretty good he is a little bit older but I feel I feel like this guy he's, he's the move he's the move and let's see if we can pick up like maybe that first baseman see if he'll sneak to us in the next round Let's see, is he still available? Yeah, this one. We'll see if we can snag him up. He'll, he could be potentially really, really good. And then let's see who else we've got sitting around here, hitter wise. We did say this guy looks pretty good. Let's snag him up too. We're just getting all the picks. That third baseman would have been nice. That was on the screen for a little bit. I think the Nationals took him. Is that what I, is this, is this the one? Yeah, he looks pretty good. I got it. I got it. I have flashing on the screen and it's distracting me next to me. So, who, who do we go here? Who do we go here? Hmm. I'm in Buster Drew. I like the name. I like the name. I think going on from here, we just got to get a little bit lucky. So I'll see you guys at the end of the draft. All right. So 57 off the rip, not ideal, but 95 potential. I'm in. I'm in. 89 potential for the next guy. 92 potential for this catcher. We might have a like superstar catcher in the making. And then who else? 76 is okay. 78 is okay. 77. But 86 for a last pick. And he's got some pop off the bat. This one might be a little... This one might be a sneaky one. So, so far so good. I'm going to keep track of all my draft picks. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to see you guys at the next draft. All right. This was kind of a cursed thing that I saw. I got to show you. You can see it. it's the third notification on the screen. Signed Aaron Judge to a 10-year deal at Houston Astros. Oh man, there would be riots in the streets if that happened. All right, draft number two, we have the fourth pick. And all right, pitchers were taken, so that's good to see. And this guy's a blue chip. Ooh, he might be the pick. He might be the pick. Let's see, any others that are showing like some really good progress? Gary Cannon looks pretty good as well. Let's see, those are starters and closers. Like I said, I'm trying to avoid uh, pitchers. This guy could be a good one. I Ooh, do I take him? Okay, so I'm torn between two right now. This, they're both center fielders, right? Like the second baseman looks good. He does, and he's a switch hitter. But I think we're looking at Ivar, who crazy, crazy good already. Or Asensio, again, looks really good. Man, 
I just like the blue chip because I know the blue chip's got guaranteed a potential, but this guy also could have a potential. So do we take the coin flip and do we skip on Navarre or do we go Asensio? That's oh man. Oh, what would you guys do? Would you take the guaranteed a potential? Because like looking at this guy's stats, are they much different? 55, 55, 40, 50. Okay. 45, 50, 55, 60. Vision and discipline are a little low compared to Asensio's. And the fielding looks pretty similar along with the speed. Ooh, the field, the accuracy looks a little low, but everything else looks pretty comparable. Honestly, I oh I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the blue chip. I'm gonna take the blue chip. I know, I know it's it's lame, it's a safe pick, but I'm looking at it, they look really similar. I think he's still available. Is he still available? He is. Oh, what are the chances? We we got both in the back to back picks. Like so, like I'm gonna show. We had a we had a compensatory pick, and like look look at every one of these teams passed up on him. The competitive balance pick passed up on him, and then we still had three picks before us in round two. So yes, please give me more of that luck. Um, I'm I'm gonna see you guys at the end because I don't. I don't really know who I'm going to take here. This we, we might be here for a while, but I think those first two picks are pretty good. All right, so we actually did make the right pick the first time. And yes, the second one is a little bit higher rated. Why is that? Why is that? I'm trying to see. They look pretty similar. The fielding? No, oh, the fielding's better. I don't know. Why? Maybe better contact. Better contact, better vision. I think that's probably the case. Better contact, better vision, better speed. I think I think that would be the the big difference. But I think either one is pretty good. I think he's just capped a little bit more because he's got B potential. But overall, I'm still pretty happy. We got Benny Snow as well. We've got Dice Dice K Dice. It's Oka. I always forget. Oh man, I always forget how to say that first name. Either way, I, I I'm pretty happy with that first pick. I did also realize that like I am kind of covering but if i'm down here uh, like i'm also kind of covering but i guess you can see the numbers above me uh we'll we'll stick with this corner we'll stick with this corner um but yeah those those are the players i'm signing so let's go to the next draft all right so i'm going to show you the first year draft i'll probably give you a little little sneak peek here and there just to kind of get an idea of what everyone's looking like this is the catcher we drafted in the first year he went up four overall which is crazy um he's still in single a and with Adley and this guy here, I don't know, like Jacob Not Nottingham, I don't really know how much time he's gonna get, right? So do I give, I feel like giving him a secondary is not a terrible idea because like, when does Mountcastle become a free agent? In a couple years, he could potentially play first base. Marcel Ishii is still a little far, like still a little ways away. And then we also have Juarez, who's up to a 61, but again, still pretty far away and then left fielder in rosas who the orioles released i signed him and they released him so i had to go and trade for him back so there we go so there he's on the team but realistically i'm looking at it going this catcher might be kind of nasty so i feel like he's gonna be held back from adley unless adley moves the first so i don't I feel like giving him a first base secondary isn't the worst. He is six foot two. It's not like he's super short. So like he could technically play first base if necessary. So I, you know, like I, I don't feel like it's, it's a terrible thing. Like I'm not going to edit him and like change, make him an outfield or anything. But like, I feel like first base is not the worst. At least it'll get him more play time. You know, just, just in case he does get held back by Adley being in the team. So that way, we can actually see if he is a good enough player. So let's do like a couple more drafts. Let's see what happens. I was thinking five in total, and then we'll go from there. So I'll see you at the next one. All right, this year we're moving down a little bit further, the seventh overall pick, and I'm kind of hoping. Okay. Okay, I, still, I feel pretty good about this. No blue chips, huh? One, all catchers, all catchers. So the team really thinks we need catchers. Okay. Okay, what? Why, why, why do we need catchers so bad? We don't need catchers like at all. This, this, we have, a, look, a, what? Look at our catchers. We have Adley, we have Nottingham, we have Donovan. There's no reason for us to need a catcher. It makes no sense. So this year I'm going off script and we're gonna take, we're gonna take Becker. That's gonna be our first pick. 
I don't like it, but that's what we're doing. Next up, in the competitive balance pick, we're going to go Rich Ricky, Ricky Anderson. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't miss it because this guy looks absolutely cracked. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with uh, Ricky Anderson. He looks insane. He's probably going to have like 82 potential and a 73 overall, but I'm okay with that. I'm going to take Gerard as well. And then let's see what we get in round three. And that'll probably be the last round I'll show you because I'm flying through this one because I'm pretty disappointed in the, the picks that my uh, team did. Jerome Swanson or Solomon Park. Is there anybody down here that I'm interested in? That's a closer. So no first baseman. Not really. I'm going to go. Where's that guy? Swanson or Park. Ooh, Solomon. I want the hitter. All right. Or Swanson. Swanson. Yeah, there, there it is. All right. So like I said, he probably was going to have like 80, 80 some potential. So we've got, boom, there we go. 65 overall, 88 potential. He's probably going to hit like 300 every single season, but no power at all. Ricky Anderson, 88 potential. So he has a chance to actually be pretty good. And his hitting stats are already really good. I'm kind of hoping he has a secondary though. Gerard also looks good, but he doesn't look like he hits at all. And then Swanson, kind of the same thing. He's got okay hitting, so we'll have to wait and see what happens. But pretty, pretty solid draft so far. It's just, are any of these guys elite? I'm looking at it. That catcher, potentially. Maybe that center fielder from the first round. I'm still on the fence about our picks, though. All right, so a little bit of an update. We've got Donovan in AAA. He's up to a 79. He is growing so quickly. He actually might be, he might be the one that we have to follow. He is growing so quick we've also got oka who's up to a 48 he's gonna be a long term watch uh ishi's up to a 68 again he looks okay but i'm not really too sold on him our other guy was juarez who i don't know about him i don't know i don't know next up we have rosas who's up to a 66 and then our plethora of center fielders who i had to go out and trade back for asensio because the cpu traded him away Made his MLB debut at 21, so he started early, a decent on base percentage, super small sample size in 100 games, but you can see he did make his MLB debut. I'm like, we have way too many center fielders. They got JJ Blade, they had Jared Kelnick at one point. Like, I need to, I, I'm gonna have to step in and trim this a little bit because we've just got, we've got too many. I've also got to find a way to get Nivar into the team because he's looking like he's gonna be pretty solid too. So. I don't know. I'm making sure I'm showing everybody, which I believe I have, except for this year's draft picks. But I'm, I am honestly think our catcher is that generational talent. I think Frank Donovan is going to be something special. I just kind of hope his power numbers go up. I'm going to see. I'm going to wait until he, he makes his MLD, MLB debut. I'm also hoping the CPU doesn't trade away any more of my prospects or release them because I've lost at least one of them every single year. So let's get to season four's draft. All right, going into this fourth one, our penultimate draft i'm thinking and you know what I'm, i i like what i'm seeing hopefully we have a little bit better of a pick are we just not getting blue chip prospects we're not getting blue chip prospects anymore we don't get that luxury all right so i just have to kind of guess and hope that uh we get some good ones uh i'm kind of what Ooh, i feel like at this point let's take some shots because i'm kind of sold on the fact that that catcher is going to be our generational talent or the center fielder. It's gonna be one of those two. The other ones have been a little lackluster and I feel like we've kind of been let down in some of them, but I feel like the catchers, he's going up by like four or five overall every single year. So I'm here to take some shots. Where's that guy? Roosevelt Patterson. He's also got a crazy good name. We gotta take him. All right, this is a really bad draft uh, for position players. So this is what we got, two catchers. We've got Patterson and Encarnacion. Maybe, maybe Patterson, maybe Patterson, but I think this one's a bust. I, I really do. All right. It seems Oka has been uh, sent somewhere else. I, I don't, I don't know where he went. Um, so there's that Oka is gone, but he was like a 40. So I don't know if he's really the guy for this challenge. Frank Donovan is off the charts at this point. This is our generational player. He is unbelievable. We've got Ishii who's up to a 71. Got some pop. He could be a, you know, maybe one of those to keep your eye on. We've got Gerard. We've got Becker. Both look decent, but Becker probably hits 300 with one home run, 97 doubles. He has like a three, 330 on base percentage, but his OPS is like 650 because he has no pop at all. We've got Richie, Ricky Anderson. I'll keep wanting to say Richie, but Ricky Anderson looks decent as well. I think the potential is going to limit him along with Swanson, 
who again really good hitting stats and then we have juarez who's just he's slowly working his way up but you know it, it just isn't it rosas kind of the same thing he's slowly working his way up and then we have asensio who's still in the majors super small small sample size but actually did fairly well this year and then we have nivar who's up to a 75 realistically he does look good i think we i think we're sold on the fact that that catcher unless i draft some crazy prospect in this last draft last draft i think that catcher frank donovan that's our generational talent okay so i found oka he was a free agent he's also 25 i didn't realize he was that old i'm gonna let him walk i think that one it's just not gonna pan out so figured i'd show you where he went he he actually just was released and they didn't bring him back so i think this is the last draft i'm pretty happy with the picks that we have so let's do it all right so there is one player that i wish we could have gotten was thomas yamada but we'll we'll see what, ooh, okay he's not good what about him all right all right center fielder no also these names orville sherry from puerto rico Ooh, i might be in on murdoch i might be sold on murdoch i i I, I think that's the answer. Two closers, not going to take them. Yeah, I think... Yeah, yeah, Murdoch. I, 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 we're at the point where, like, I need... It's like boomer bust. Devin Murdoch seems like that exact situation. Boomer bust. We got to take them. And there's also a chance we can get a little sneaky pick in this round here. And I don't know who, though. Because I'm looking at some of these players going... I'm not... I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. What about the second baseman? No... Yikes, these are pretty poor. I'm going to go with this guy, Ruben Tyler. Got another, oh, we don't have another pick coming up. Why don't we have another pick coming up? Who did we sign in free agency? I haven't even looked at the lineup uh, for the last couple seasons. I've just been kind of letting the CPU handle everything, except for making sure we don't lose our players. Uh, Rich Campanaris or Naris is in the team. Honestly, I, I'm just kind of sold on Murdoch. Is he good or is he bad? And I'm kind of hoping he's good because otherwise I think we still have found our generational player in what the second draft. I feel like that was still pretty good. So here we go. What do we have here? 85 potential. The dude looks like he's going to rake though. He looks like he's going to mash like crazy. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on him. We've also got Campanaris who looks like he's only going to be able to hit righties or Campanaris. I should say <laughs> Ramirez, meh. Pitcher, so I'm not interested. And then Tyler with 78 potential. So maybe Murdoch. I mean, those hitting stats look pretty good. Also, 85 potential, if he has a couple good years, could go up to an A potential. So we're looking good there. And yeah, let's finish off the year. All right, so we have a gold glove. Frank Donovan. It looks like he made the team this year. So no rookie of the year. But let's go take a look. All right, so we'll just kind of fly through our... Our pick. So he did make it to the majors. He hit 230 on the year. He's up to an 86. So again, he's going up quite a bit. Contact versus left went down a little bit this year. But overall, let's see what we did. 135 games, hits 115, 13 doubles, 15 home runs. So he actually played like the whole year in the majors. So the numbers were not not great. But again, I think he looks really solid. He is 25, but we'll have to kind of monitor him. Ishii looking like kind of a beast. Looks like he mashes, by the way. What else we got here? Gerard Becker, still pretty low. Interesting. Richie Anderson, also up to a 77 at 24 years old. Could be a guy to keep an eye on, but I think the B potential is going to limit him. We've got Juarez up to a 72, as well as Swanson up to a 72. So they're about the same. And left field, we got Rosas, who's 24, 72 overall. Looks more like a platoon guy. He kind of looks like DJ Stewart. Like, those exact stats look like DJ Stewart in game. And then we've got Asensio, who looks like he's made it to the majors, played 80 games at quite the year. Actually, a pretty decent season. Not great, but you know what? Not not bad at all. Again, I got to keep our eye out. And then Nivar as well. So we, we've kind of got an idea of where everybody is. Like, we've got those most recent picks. But for the most part, I feel like we got to go with it's one of these center fielders. It's just his hitting stats just aren't where I need them to be. He's still only 22, though. And he's 23. Man, he could be good. His fielding's almost maxed out. His reactions are almost maxed out. Speed at 88. I mean, reactions 87 is too. It's the hitting stats. They're lacking. And then Asensio looks just really well-rounded. 
The thing is, I, let's see what his potential is. 86, so he's almost maxed out potential-wise. And what's what's Nivar's? Because I, I think it was like low 90s, right? 93, so potentially he could get a lot better. And then we got Donovan at 86, so I, I still think Donovan's the one. So you know what? Let's sim a couple years. Let's see what happens. All right, so season's over, 2027. Any league leaders, just the strikeouts. All right, just some strikeouts. And then we had a gold glove for our first baseman. Oh, and a rookie of the year. Is this guy, is this the guy? 31 home runs, a potential. Hold on, hold on. We might be onto something here. Okay, ooh, -hoo -hoo. it makes me think, you know what I mean? It, it, it making me think a little bit. It's making me think maybe we don't have the right guy. Let's see, Asensio's up to 84, so he's probably maxed out because we saw it was like 85, 86 for his potential. So he's probably close to where he's gonna be. Maybe bumps up to like the mid to high 80s, but I'm not too sure he improves too much more. Ivar, 81, had a tough year. 26 home runs, though. Not bad. I think more years, this guy's going to be good. You know, probably 27, 28, he'll be really good. But again, not necessarily generational. I honestly think this is the guy. I, I, I It's crazy, but if you... Ah, ooh, maybe Ishii is. How old is Ishii? He's 25, though. And I'm thinking generational. I'm thinking someone that's coming up and making a difference immediately. A lot of the guys that we drafted, they're already in their mid-20s. When did Trout make his debut? Mike Trout was 20. I feel like we're a little behind the curve on this one. So he made his debut when he was 24. So like, again, it, that's kind of like an Adley situation. Late debut, but could be good. So because he's honest, it might be Nivar. Like 26 home runs. It's good, but the rest of the, like the strikeout numbers are so high. And now I'm starting to think we might not have a, a, a guy. We might not have a guy. It might, it could be this guy. This guy could come up, what, 22 next year? 22 is still fairly young. Like, Soto was what? I think he's now 22, to be honest. But let's see, where, what are we, where are we at with Soto? He's currently 24. He made his debut when he was 19. Really solid. 20 as well. 22 is still not bad. I'm kind of torn now. Like 25, I feel like we're we're kind of hitting that age. And what did we say for... Where is he? Where is Donovan? Donovan's already 26. He is good. I mean, we rock with Nivar. 23 years old, made his debut at 22. And we stick with it. Like 26 home runs solid. It's the strikeout numbers, man. The strikeout numbers are killing me. The only other player that I see making his debut next year... Maybe Patterson, but B potential. Juarez is already kind of older. Murdoch might be the guy that's just going to crank out home runs for the next couple seasons. Everybody else is in their mid-20s. So either we rock with Nivar, who I feel like was the guy that we had the most hype around drafting him. So I, I'm torn between the two. I, I, could you consider generational like a 24-year-old who comes up and it, for the next you know 10 years of his career is really solid? I guess. All right, I've thought about this. I'm going Frank Donovan because I'm thinking catchers, they're like really tough. It's really tough to get a good catcher, right? You think of like Yachty, you think of Johnny Bench, you think of, honestly, I think Adley Rutschman has the potential to kind of go up there with some of those catchers. Catchers, you normally don't hit your prime. You really don't hit, you know, that good catcher status until you're a little bit older. It takes you it, it, just, it just takes time to be a really good catcher. So you know what? Frank Donovan is the guy. I mean, 273 and the numbers that he put up, pretty solid. And the fact that last year was kind of his rookie year, I think we rock with it. Yes, we did have a, a, a rookie hit 31 home runs at the age of 25, which is awesome. I do also think Zachary Nivar is going to be very, very good. And we'll check in in their careers later on. But I think Frank Donovan, yes, he is a little bit older. I think this guy's got the chance to be a, like a generational catcher. So let's see what happens. Well, I stepped through the offseason. I already know some of you guys are going to be like, what about Yogi Berra? What about Mike Piazza? What about Pudge? What about all these other ones? Yes, there's been some really good catchers throughout time, but you got to think, I feel like there's been more like good players in other positions throughout history. Like you can think of like, there's like two or three good center fielders. There's two or three good shortstops. There's two or three good third basemen. I think for every one catcher. So I'm feeling like, you know what we gotta go frank donovan we gotta go the catcher and i feel like it, it's just a little bit better because i feel like catchers and mlb the show are so hard to draft good ones good ones are really hard to draft so i feel like we've got a good chance right here 
to get like a Hall of Fame catcher. Let's do it. All right, I actually think this is the first time the post the postseason has has been a like a a thing for the Orioles in this sim. And let's see, any league leaders offensively? No. What about awards? A gold glove for the catcher. So that's actually his second one. And we have a rookie of the year in Devin Murdoch. So again, at first baseman, I, he looks very good. He looks like he's going to be very good. Again, 23 years old could be one of those guys that we could look for in the future as things go. But again, B potential really limits him. I don't know how much more he's going to be able to grow. But again, we do have a gold glove in Donovan. And then if we take a look, maybe a silver slugger is a possibility. It is not. It's not even close, it looks like. So let's go take a look. This team's kind of stacked. The more I'm looking at it, like Ishii already got put to the bench, like after one year, which is crazy because they're like, I want Murdoch instead, which based off that season, I totally get it. This guy also looks like he's going to be good. His potential also went up. So we've actually done really well draft wise, like a lot of a lot of players are, are doing well. I decided to make Donovan the DH because I wanted to see if we can get those power numbers up and giving him those at bats. Ivar, again, an okay season, but nothing like spectacular. And then if we took a look, take a look at Asensio, pretty solid, pretty, pretty solid. But again, how much longer can he hold this high 80s rating if his potential is not going up? And that's what I'm worried about. And that's why I was perfectly happy with giving Frank Donovan the game time, giving him that generational tag. Because again, we're only three years in and I feel like he's he's pretty good offensively. We're gonna need those power numbers, power numbers to go up to be like comparable because like if we want to take a look like what did Adley do this like this year that just happened in the time that he was in the majors he hit 13 home runs so like in 400 at bats in 500 at bats Frank Donovan did worse he did worse he did strike out quite a bit more that's kind of the big thing that's kind of the big issue because every other number looks pretty comparable besides the doubles the doubles is kind of the downside but strikeouts and doubles are like the big difference between what Adley did and what Donovan did and because of that the average the on base percentage OPS slugging all went down and numbers still aren't bad like I, I feel like these are decent numbers and I, I mean looking at Devin Murdoch it looks like nothing because the dude's just mashing but let's get a comparison to what Murdoch as potential wise 85 so really only one more potential like one more overall he can go up to so i guess i guess we'll we'll have to wait and see what happens so i don't know i don't know i don't know i feel like now i'm i've jinxed it like he's not gonna do anything like i'm hoping he's a late maybe maybe a late bloomer we'll see we'll see what happens here they get eliminated and um let's, let's just see let's see what he did in the in the postseason he was bad i think i jinxed it I think I jinxed it. I think we're in trouble. All right, so a third gold glove in his career. And as you can see, Marcel Ishii actually was in the MVP race. So we might actually have like somewhat of a, a pretty solid player right here, which is awesome. Just goes to show I'm good at drafting, which is which is good to know. I, I like knowing that I can draft well, which is clearly what I can do. So Donovan, two actually three gold gloves in four seasons which is pretty impressive and i was looking at his numbers and right now this is probably gonna piss off some people but yadi's career took a little bit to get started and he was let's see he was in the majors for about let's see here let's see let's see he debuted when he was 21 so again he did start a little bit younger but in the four years leading up to that, offensively, it was like non-existent. And then it took until about, he was 27 to start getting going offensively. And even then, I was actually 28 when he had his first OPS over 800. And if we're looking at this, 28 years old, his first OPS over 800, or at least 800. So with that in mind, our, I'm not saying this guy is going to be the next Yachty, but potentially we might have a Yachty type player, which I would say Yachty's a generational catcher. We've got three gold gloves in four seasons, which is pretty crazy. We might have something here. Um, am I stretching it? Maybe, maybe. But uh, again, no silver slugger. Just because he's not hitting home runs, which is uh, which is a bit of a, a letdown. I'm not gonna lie. I need some home runs in my life. I need him to eclipse the 20 mark, which Yachty did twice in his career. So if we can do it more than Yachty, I mean, we're, we're already doing better. Uh, Nivar got sent down, which 
yikes and then murdoch also did very well so first baseman i'm really good at drafting first baseman but the catcher frank donovan we're, we're gonna full send it on his career from now on and what i'll do is i'll check in on murdoch and ishii and Nivar and Asensio kind of later on once we start getting a little bit older and I can kind of see if they've really panned out or not. Another gold glove. An this guy is the gold glove master. This guy is, is going to be nuts. Nah, it's nasty. It, it, it just is. Uh, don't worry. Don't don't look at that. Don't don't look at that. Uh, yeah, Frank Donovan, the dude, the dude is just the gold glove maestro. How tall is he, by the way? Six foot two. For some reason, he looks bigger. It, it probably the weight thing is a uh, part of the he he just looks tall he's like the string bean machine back there but overall again solid season right like on base percentage is really solid the ops is a little bit low i'm not gonna lie still hasn't eclipsed that 20 home run mark that i'm hoping he will ever reach but um war he's he's doing okay again i i'm i'm sold on him being a really good catcher for his career like we're we're looking good the fact that he's got four gold gloves in five seasons is crazy. Uh, we're, we're just not going to talk about the other guys. All right. We're just, we're just not postseason time. They win. Okay. Uh, they win again. They win again in the world series. They lost tough. All right. Awards Murdoch. Oh, speaking of Murdoch regressing, he is regressing. So we got what? Two and a half seasons of Murdoch and he's regressing. So probably like a Chris Davis situation with him. You get one good year and then he's done. You can see Donovan had a good postseason. He's putting up good numbers. We just need him to do those type of things in the season. Ishii also hit nine postseason home runs. Good Lord. But that's a, that's a World Series appearance. A little, little postseason experience under his belt. And let's keep moving. How many years are we in the in the majors now? Looks like Asensio was, 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 was decent. Was decent. But let's see here. Where are we at? Five years last year of his contract. Oh, he's gonna be a free agent. Ooh, is he a free agent or has he got one more one more year of arbitration? Let's do it. All right, season's over. Uh, you can see it. Um, <laughs> the guy's a freak, man. No gold glove for Donovan this year. Hank Aaron, no. rookie of the year for Rosas. Rosas finally made it to the main. <laughs> oh man. This guy's a monster. This guy's a freak. This is so I was wrong. We we did draft a generational guy. It just wasn't the guy that we thought it was. Uh, is Frank Donovan regressing? He didn't go up. So there's that. Um, but he finished second in gold gloves. So like he's still really good defensively. But yeah. Um, this is Donovan at 30 years old, six years in the majors. We all know what's coming, right? If he does this, he's kind of stalled and I've been wrong. This guy's a freak. This guy's a freak. This guy's a freak. Um, Marcel Ishii, take a bow. Holy cow. Next season. All right. So Donovan has signed with a new team. He went to a team in the central. He went to the guardians. Looks like he'll be starting with a player that I'm actually really high on in real life in Jackson Churia or Jason. Jason? Ooh, no, his brother is Jackson and he plays for the Brewers. His brother lit up the minors this year. Um, he was nasty in real life. You gotta check, you gotta check him out. Jackson Churio. Insane numbers. But yeah, he's with uh Jordan. Okay. Uh so it looks like Frank Donovan's gonna be playing DH and catcher. We'll, 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 we'll keep track of him. He signed a fairly juicy contract. So there's that. But it turns out the star of the show is Marcel Ishii, who is now 30 years old, only four years in the majors. He still has two more years before he's a free agent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sim the next two seasons. Just and if, if an award happens, I'll show you. But let's just see what happens. All right. So the Orioles won a World Series. They actually defeated the Marlins, who they lost to last time. And I'm, I'm intrigued. Nolan Jones, Nolan Jones. Okay, so Ishii, again, put up stupid numbers. It's just Nolan Jones also put up stupid numbers. Um, I, I took a look at something. And uh, what the heck? I, I don't think you're ready for these numbers that he put up. Uh, 31 home runs. Where has this been? He dou almost doubled his best numbers. What? 31 home runs? Are we serious right now? 
the dude doesn't really hit doubles. He's just like, I'm going to, I'm going to hit 31 home runs and 13 doubles. What's his speed? 22. That makes sense. That dude's not moving. Um, but crazy. I didn't see if he won a gold glove. Let me, let me take a look and see. He did not. He did not. All right. Uh, Ishii did though. So I'm, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. So there's, there's Donovan 31 home runs out of nowhere. And then, um, I, I briefly showed you Ishii's numbers. Okay, I need to go to player stats because, um, what's his name? Mike Trout retired, and I completely forgot to show that. That is just that. That's my fault. That's my fault completely. So now I need to see the numbers. So Bryce Harper probably around the same home runs as what Trout had. If I can remember to put Trout stats on screen, I will. I probably won't. I'm just gonna be honest with you. But I'm I'm, I'm interested to see kind of like where everybody kind of sits as we are what 10 years into the future right 30 yeah, about about right so not team rankings let's go back to play nope nope right there go to career back up a spot so we did that we got rbis you can kind of see where everybody is like soto's 34 tatis is 34 you kind of get the idea right hits wise we are 2600 for harper 2600 for bregman these two are soto Ooh, Tatis is that up here 2100 so maybe Soto's got a chance I mean he's holding his rating fairly well we'll have to wait and see so where are our our two guys where is Donovan at currently he's at shy of a thousand uh not great uh <laughs> and if you look at his numbers they're honestly not that good but defensively the dude's a freak and like that's kind of that's kind of different you know that's kind of something that you're like wow that's pretty impressive and then we've got ishii who's like i'm just at a thousand hits i'm at the same number in two less years home runs he's at 200 in his career <sighs> crazy numbers crazy numbers so yeah let's let's see how this season plays out and then i'll probably start sim like i think this is year ishii hits free agency so what i'll do is i'll probably just sim a few years in the like in advance like i said i was going to do and we'll just kind of start comparing everything because I feel like we've got two pretty decent players here. All right, 2034. Um, something happened that I completely forgot could happen. Uh, Nivar is good. As you can see by his previous seasons, he's good. Um, the on base percentage is average a little low, but overall, yeah, he's he's really good. Just won an MVP. Uh, Ishii finished second, still putting up crazy numbers, right? Uh, he did dip a little bit last year after a bad year but you know he's he's still putting up crazy numbers he did sign a small extension with the orioles so we'll have to see what he does there uh gold glove uh donovan's back to winning him but he is starting to regress a little bit which is a disappointment because he's actually putting up really good seasons you know like i feel like we've we've seen the best of him which sucks because like you know if you if you look at like what yadi did which is it's tough to do 19 years behind the plate is really tough to do like i'm not I'm not bashing him at all for that because that, that is tough to do. Um, I don't know if you would consider, I, I I doubt you would consider him a generational catcher, but Jason Kendall, he also lasted 15 years in the majors. You know, like Mike Piazza was something that was a little bit different too. He was 16 years. So like, we're like halfway there, a little bit over halfway there for, you know, comparisons to some of like the more recent catchers that I think of as like, you know, just better catchers of like the, the most recent times. And it, it's tough to last that long in this game. And it, it sucks because like you would like players to last more than 10 years and he might get to 11, 12 and then just be unusable. So we'll have to wait and see. We'll check in on him probably about that time, like 12, 13 years. Uh, first base, no, no gold glove there. Um, I did see Nivar 1-1, one, one. but DH Ishii, it looks like he's more of the DH over the first baseman now, but he did win a silver slugger. And let's see, outfield, Nivar did as well. So yeah, there's that. So yeah, we have crazy talents all across the board. Do we win another World Series? We do not. But they've been they've been postseason happy. They've been making postseasons every single year now. So yeah, I, I feel like we've kind of seen everything. Nivar is a free agent. Do they offer him a contract? Probably. Oh, they did. They they did not. They did not. Oh, I see him right there on the screen. Okay, yeah. All right, let's let's keep tracks on Ishii because that's the guy I'm most impressed by. But uh, Nivar, late bloomer, and he's killing it. All right, so we're about to be in season 10 or 11, I should say. So I kind of want to check out 
some of the players that I've drafted throughout the year. So what I'm going to do here is we'll go to catcher. Let's see. We don't we have Encarnacion, who's been kind of a backup for most of his career. You can see unfortunate, but that's just the way things go. We've got Ishii. We've been keeping track of his career. We know what he's like. Second base, we've got Becker, who, again, hasn't really gotten the chance. Last two seasons has been decent, though, when given the, cha the chance. Gerard, kind of the same thing. He, he looks like a glove first guy, so we'll leave it there. Juarez finally got his debut a couple seasons ago. It's just he was a super late bloomer. You can see his stats look unbelievable. It's just taken up until like 2031, 2032 for him to be usable in the lineup. And with that, he's actually been very, very good. It's just he was one of those guys that was just a super late bloomer. As you can see, he made his debut when he was 30. So that was like the only downside to him because he's actually been really solid. Rosas, again, late bloomer as well. But uh, when used, not bad, not bad. A good platoon guy. You can definitely tell he excels versus righties and that's perfectly fine. He's been solid. Let's see, Benny Snow, another late bloomer. We kind of got, you know, his numbers there. And I think that was it, you know, for the players that are still on the team. We look at other ones now. Let's see what Asensio's up to. I haven't, I haven't even checked out what he's up to. Is he not in the league anymore? Is he not? Oh, I think I spelled it wrong. I spelled, I definitely spelled it wrong. That, that was dumb of me. That was, is he not in the league anymore? No. What was he, a center fielder? He's got to be like, what, up up a little bit older now? Is he not in the league anymore? He's out of the league. Oh, no, right here. Gustavo Asensio. Did I, 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 did I spell his name wrong? Didn't I put S-E-N and it didn't pop up? Maybe maybe I maybe I missed. I, I must have missed something. I definitely missed something. But you can kind of see his career here. It's been good. It's been good. You know, he, he definitely had a really good season right here. A couple other good years sprinkled in. But he's been he's been hovering around this rating so would i say he's been unbelievable no but he's he's been fairly good he's been pretty pretty solid so i think that's another one i'm trying to see what other names i'm missing oh there's one there's one it's not this one i've got i've got him we've got swanson roger swanson we had him did he even make it with our team he did no this is a this one jerome swanson hasn't even played okay so there's that and then the other one was um, the catcher, Patterson, who was a backup for a little bit with us. And Roosevelt Patterson. And doesn't really seem like his career took off either. So that's unfortunate for him. This one, Ricky. Ricky Anderson. Um, I believe he was really close in MVP. Look, look at those numbers. Look at those attributes right there. 39 home runs last year killed it absolutely killed it he's actually been really good i mean look at on base percentage of almost 400 here with a 943 ops this season right here was solid so he's been he's been good he's been very good um the war at minus 2.2 is not what you want but at 8.2 war here crazy crazy he's actually been he's been a pretty decent ball player in the seven years he's been in the bigs just over a thousand hits almost 200 home runs i would say he's pretty good now, let's go take a look at our catcher, um, Donovan, who is also starting to regress. Frank Donovan, you can see he's down to a 94, still kind of holding his rating. Um, again, had a good year, another good season. He's still putting up really good numbers. I'm really impressed with it. War-wise, 6.5, we got 6.8, 4.8, 5.3, just shy of 50 war. And again, the numbers are good. I'm pretty happy with what he's been doing as he's gotten older. 200 home runs, almost 1,400 hits. And let's let's kind of let's kind of take a look at let's let's take a look at Yadi's career by the time so Yadi career Yadi's career was less than 200 home runs hits he did get 2,000 I don't think Donovan's gonna hit that mark but um Gold Gloves he's won what are we at five I think he's at five or six which Yadi hit one two three four five six seven eight nine so we're we're a little shy there but offensively I feel like he's really comparable to what yadi's putting up numbers wise so i feel like we've we've got like a mini yadi here you know the the defensive numbers are great offensive numbers have been very comparable and then of course we've got our guy ishii who's just been unbelievable he's been he's been killing it very consistent you know mid to high 30s or even 40s for home runs the average is high the on base percentage the ops he is 34 has one more year left on his contract. I would assume he'd get another couple seasons left in his career. We're at 300 home runs and just shy of 1,500 hits. So let's sim a few more seasons.
I lied. There's one more player, Nivar. How did I skip Nivar? I, I completely skipped him. He's with the Brewers and uh, 45 home runs. Killed it. I mean, this guy's good. He's just a late bloomer. He'd sign a huge deal with the Brewers. He's going to be here for a little bit. And uh, yeah, 250 home runs, 1,100 hits. I mean, the guy is pretty comparable to what Ishii's doing. You know, like, it's crazy. It's crazy. All right, 2037, I think we've kind of seen the best of every single player that is good um so let's let's go to the guardians let me show you what donovan is he's down to an 84 so he's 36 years old definitely definitely had a bad year 30 games played last year was probably like his best good year so we've, we've kind of seen the best from him so i'm going to keep an eye on him he's got one more year left on his contract and then we'll, we'll take a look and see what we're looking at when he retires he actually wasn't bad this year in 30 games how many at bats almost 107 home runs 30 hits like that's that's a pretty good off the bench bat to have 53 war for his career i mean the dude was a crazy gold glover like half the years he was in the majors he had a gold glove like that's that's impressive that's impressive and we all know mlb the show does like to kill players by like eight years nine years of service time so i feel like that's a that's a pretty respectable career ivar is also going down and he's i mean he's still doing well but again he's kind of hit that service time where Nine years, you know, that's too much of a major league experience for one guy. They just can't do it past that. So just shy of 50 on the war. But again, I'm pretty happy with the numbers that he put up. 300 home runs, 1,400 hits. I mean, that's a respectable career. And in MLB The Show, I feel like that's generational, right? Like, it's really hard to get, you know, players like Pujols who play 20 years. Players like Yachty who play 20 years, you know. Joey Votto, 16 years. We've got Goldschmidt who's who's just hit 12 years and is coming off an MVP season. And I'm struggling here to get a guy going 10 years before he starts to regress, right? I got Nivar who just hit nine years and he's starting to regress. So like, it sucks, it sucks. Um, but again, it does kind of show that like, it, it is tough for players to make it that year, that long into a career. And to have those types of players, they are, they are kind of like a generational player. If they can continue to produce at a major level for that long, like you can see he kind of regressed here still a very good season but then popped off for one more good year and then is now really regressing at the age of 35 which again 35 years old isn't isn't young per se for an athlete i know players are now starting to play longer into their careers but you know i think we've we've kind of seen the best of our three like quote unquote really good players i would say ishi a guy who's hitting 30 40 37 34 40 home runs for what one two three four five like like what half his career if I could have gotten him to play a little bit longer, or if I would have just fully committed to him this season right here, I think I think we would have had a guy hitting 400 home runs. I mean, he still needs what 23 home runs. I think 400 is still possible. I definitely do. I, I honestly, if I can get two more years, we're getting 400 home runs. We're getting 2,000 hits. The thing is, are we gonna get those? Are, are we gonna get those two years out of him? That's gonna be tough. And then again, if we look at what Donovan was putting up, where is he? He is pretty pretty short of 2,000 and quite a few away from 300 home runs. But as a catcher, I feel like this is a really good catcher. Six gold gloves in 12 years is pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, he had like four in his first five years in the majors. Like, that's insane. That's insane. So, generational catcher? I would say so. I would say so. Um, I, I, I would say so. For MLB The Show purposes, I would say so. Yeah. Let's, let's keep going. I also forgot to mention that Marcel Ishii is like the best glove at first base for like his whole career as well. I've been talking about Donovan being a gold glover. This guy's been popping off with gold gloves left, right, and center. He honestly might have more than what Donovan had. So to think of 30 plus home runs in almost what? So we're close to 30 home runs in almost every single career bar the one season where he only played 72 games and he would have hit 30 home runs if he played the whole season. So honestly, this dude's a freak. This guy is insane. This, this is a unbelievable. This is so like Paul Goldschmidt is probably the best comparison for this guy right here. It's crazy. It, he might even be better than he's probably better than Paul Goldschmidt, to be honest. The on base percentage is a little low. Um, I'm trying to see. Yeah, the on base percentage is a little low. But like, man, obviously I can't compare him to Pool Holes. Pool Holes was a different animal. But 
it, it's it's crazy what this guy did in like 10 full seasons i would say a 10 and a half good like full seasons honestly if you look at it these are besides like the on base like i can't compare them to pool halls i can't i can't even compare them to vado because the on base percentage but like these are these are insane numbers these are really good numbers uh these are very very good numbers uh yeah especially to be able to put it up consistently like i'll come over here to look at career numbers we'll go ah, can i do by first baseman just to kind of compare who's still in the league like sort pete alonzo's at 2500 hits let's see what he was putting up consistently here pretty similar so like compare him to pete alonzo like is pete alonzo gonna be a generational guy no, Torkelson, we'll compare him to Torkelson. You can kind of see Torkelson was putting up 20, 30 home runs less. Tristan Casas, Matt Olson. Let's see what we got for Matt Olson in his prime. 30, 30, 30. Never, never, ecl never eclipsed 40 home runs in a season. Prado never did either. Like we're, I could, I could definitely just do this. Uh, uh, 40 one time for the Italian breakfast or whatever, whatever the heck this guy's name is. Marcel Ishii is like up there. I don't know who Norm Harrington is. Buster Drew. Did, did we draft Buster Drew? I feel like we did. I'm trying to see what other names are chilling here. Murdoch still going? Just hasn't been playing. He just had a couple, like, had one good year with us and then just disappeared. Let me see who else. Anybody? Does, yeah, so I feel like we've, we've kind of covered, like, Freddie Freeman would have probably been the best player to compare him to. I'm not going to be able to find him. I'm not. I'm just not. So... Let's go all position players, home runs wise. Acuna's at 650. Soto's at 580. Pete Alonso's 573. I guess if we want to be considered generational, we probably should have to hit like those kind of numbers. But you know how hard it is to find like where where is Ishii? He's hit 400. Like he's eclipsed a pretty high number. And the fact that he's been able to do that with gold glove defense at first, that's that's something special. Uh, catchers wise, I think I think the the catcher tag generational was a little bit of a stretch we never really hit like the peak he did hit 30 home runs in high 20s for a couple seasons but i think the gold glove thing would be the thing that would like kind of give him a chance and then let me see if i can find nevar who was like a crazy late bloomer he's still going hitting 30 24 home runs like he's still he's still hitting home runs he's just average and on base percentage is pretty low but i think i think ishii is the guy 100 percent 2039 and i i guarantee this is the last one until they retire because i i, I feel like someone on our uh, one of our homies got robbed here first off where is oh, i really hope what's his face didn't retire on me but uh ishi ishi got robbed you can see oh not that he's not on the side or the mvp vote koji yabo was, or yabu was very very good i'm not taking away his his season whatsoever and you've got Matthew Gomez and Thomas Yamada. Real quick, we also do have, you know, the gold glove man himself, Ishii. 38 home runs. The RBIs is low. I, de I definitely give him that. What is what is the lineup looking like? That we're Oh, wow. Oh, oh no, just kidding. Oh, wow. That, that, okay, that makes a little bit more sense now. But 38 home runs, 280 average, 355 on base percentage, and a 910 OPS. How is he not making the at least the top three with those numbers? You know what I mean? Like those are good numbers. He's killing it. He's almost at 450 home runs and just shy of 2,000 hits. I need him to get that. Uh, he's got a couple more years left on his contract. I need him to hit it. There we go. All right, Frank Donovan has retired. I haven't even checked to see if the other ones have retired as well. In Nivar and Ishi. Not that one. And then what was it? Nivar. Let's see. He has. Okay. So we'll go with Nivar first. 39 years old. Just coming off. I think it was second year out of the bigs. Okay. 360 home runs. Hits 1679. The average, the on base percentage, the OPS is low, but the dude hit nukes. Like that, that that's just kind of what he did. He just hit home runs. He struck out a lot, but he hit home runs. I mean, he's finishing with a war at 54 which oh man I, I career war all right let's let's take a look here 54 puts him around the range of like let's see who's who's around there jeff kent big poppy 
Joe Bauer. Okay. Uh, Ian Kinsler, Mini Minoso, like that kind of range of a player. And Big Poppy was a Hall of Famer. Uh, like Johnny, da Johnny Damon's also in that area with 56. So I wouldn't say a bad career, right? You know, played center field. So a, a prime, prime, you know, situ like prime position and fielding wise, he was actually fairly good for a majority of his career, like really good for a majority of his career. So like, I didn't check his gold gloves. That was like the one guy I didn't check, but I do remember kind of cycling through the silver sluggers and gold gloves every couple of years. And I did see he won at least two. So, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't a bad player at all. Um, Ishii didn't retire. So we'll, we'll come back and we'll, we'll take a look at him. But for Donovan, you know, we, we talked about his gold gloves. The, the dude was a gold glove master, you know, hits 1500 home runs, 228 and war wise, where are we at for him? 53. So kind of the same type of player. I think for him being a catcher also kind of bumps him up a little bit. I, I wish I could like check by position. I probably can on a different website, but let me see what, what was Yachty's war for his career. It was batting. Nope. Not offensive war. I just want his action. I know war is like not necessarily the, the best to look at or position oh uh, let me let me see yadi or um let's see here fan graphs there we go that's what I'm, that's what i'm looking for so in his career yadi had 55.7 so pretty comparable right like again again like yadi i wouldn't say he's the best catcher all time defensively you could definitely put up an argument for that that's kind of what we got here a really good defensive catcher that had a little bit of pop in the prime of his career when I say generational, might be a little bit of a stretch, but I think we did find a very, very, very talented catcher that did very well. Let's compare him to Henry Davis, who I just see is chilling here, who had less than 200 home runs and 1,400 hits. So I feel like we we did really well catcher-wise. And also that center fielder, I think we did really well, but I think the first baseman was the best. Also, uh, they didn't make it to the Hall of Fame, so there's that. And here is our guy, Marcel Ishii, or Ishii? I, I don't know. He's 42, just retired, 53 overall. He's in power still. Uh, I didn't even look at his quirks this entire time. This dude probably had all the quirks in the world, but he does have Rally Monkey still. Uh, two years out of the league, actually played really up until he retired. Had a weird off year and then back into 162. Was bad, even though he hit 27 home runs. 14 home runs shy of the 500 home run mark, 2,172 hits. And just shy of 8,000 at bats. Had a couple triples, had a couple doubles here and there. I mean, the dude didn't have any speed, so like, he was hitting home runs and he was hitting them like crazy. I mean, almost 500 in his career. Almost 500. Finishing with a 272 average, a 338 on base percentage, and an 842 on OPS. He would have had 500 home runs if it wasn't for this year. He would have had it. He would have had it. Oh boy, man. What could have been finishes with 41.4 war. Ooh, I honestly being a first baseman slash DH is definitely going to lower his war, like kind of like a big poppy, right? That's why his war is low. And I did mention his name earlier when comparing him to the other guys, but you can kind of tell why. So there he is. There he is. Did we make it to the hall of fame? No, I bet you if he had 500 home runs, he would have. I, ah, so he had, let's see, to, uh, top home run hitters all time. Let's see. It was like 580 or 484, 484. Where does that put him? That would put him 30th or 31st. Cause there's two people tied for 29. That would put him 31st all time for home runs, which I mean, the guy was kind of crazy. I was kind of, I bet you if he hit 500 home runs, he's a hall of famer. I think, I, I definitely think he would have made it. If it. Yeah. That one season, that one season held him back. But I think you can be five seasons. We come up with three players who were really good. One of them, I would consider generational. The dude was winning crazy amount of gold gloves, hit almost 500 home runs. I mean, you gotta talk about that, right? Let me know what you think. Am I, am I stretching it? Am I trying to sell you something that isn't true? Let me know what you think. If you enjoyed today's video, hit that like button down below. Subscribe to the channel for new and enjoy the content. And of course, get in the comment section. I want to see your comments. Let me know what you think. Should I try it with the pitcher? 
Did I try to find like the best pitcher of all time? Let's see what uh, let's see what you guys say. Check out this video. I think you'll like it. Actually, I know you'll like it. Just go check it out. There you go. That's about it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.